right, Rich, I'm really excited to catch up with you here on the Fujitsu stand at Mobile World Congress. Uh, you know, two of the big themes here, open networking and artificial intelligence, uh, seems like there's a lot of interesting opportunity as those two converge. Maybe you can lay it out for us. Yeah, it's been a really interesting show and those two trends are really the most important trends that Fujitsu's seen at the show. We're hearing a lot from our customers. AI is critical for the network. Um, there's opportunities in how you monetize network and also how we optimize and transform the network. And then open networking is just the right foundation for the network. We're seeing that with ORAN, um, all the way into the optical network with open mind systems and open rotums. So it, those two critical trends really underpin the trends we're seeing as well as the strategy that Fujitsu has. And then I guess a subset of that AI mega trend would be AI RAN. There's a, a lot of opportunities that operators can pursue there either individually or collectively, but maybe you can kind of set the table for us. Yeah, AI RAN is a really super interesting topic that's starting to come to the forefront really right now. There, there's kind of three main categories for AI RAN. So the first one is AI and RAN. So that's where you have a common infrastructure that's managing both the AI RAN, or the RAN workloads, as well as AI workloads. And from that, you can both have your infrastructure and then monetize spare capacity. The next one is AI for RAN. This is where you're using AI to optimize the performance for the RAN and to make it perform better. And we're seeing anywhere from 20 to 50% improvements in using AI to, to control the RAN. And that final use case is where the AI applications are aware of the capabilities of the RAN and can deliver then better performance and better control. And so given that opportunity space, uh, it's more than just a technological problem, right? It's also an operational problem. So how are you engaging with your customers around AI ops? Yeah, AI ops are uh, another critical area where you're using AI and AI applications to optimize the network throughout its life cycle. So we're seeing from initial deployment um, all the way through uh, troubleshooting AI applications that can help um, do things in a more optimal way. So first example we're seeing is uh, an application we call accelerated RCA, or accelerated root cause analysis. Um, it's an application that we're testing with carriers and their networks, and it's helping to to isolate and troubleshoot millions of alarms down to single root causes that they can go and solve rapidly. The other place we're seeing AI-enabled applications come in is further in the life cycle where they're trying to retire older assets. There's lots of times where there's equipment in the network for 10 to 20 years and they need to find a way to get that equipment out of the network, turn off the power that's going to it, upgrade to new solutions that have better security and better performance. Um, we have tools that are helping to make that faster, more economical, more reliable, and do it all in service where it can be to make sure that they get to that end goal that they need. So you gave us a good overview of the AI RAN opportunities. Any specific examples you can share? Yeah, we just announced earlier this week a, a demonstration that we did with SoftBank and, and Liberty Global, where we actually did a, a use case, and we're actually showing it in the booth today, where we showed the benefits of using AI in the network with AI RAN and what that means from a use case and application point of view. And so as operators go down this path of really embracing AI, both for new monetization opportunities, but also driving internal efficiencies, while there is a lot of emphasis on the radio network, it's more than that though, right? There are some other considerations in, at stake here, huh? Yeah, for sure. AI is really one of the key drivers that we're seeing in the network for bandwidth growth. Um, so we're seeing even in the optical space, there's more and more demand going to the network. I mean, one of the key solutions we're bringing out uh, is 800G ZR optics to help with that trend. Um, a very important trend that we're seeing, uh, something that we announced earlier this week and are showing at the booth today. Well, I really appreciate you giving me an overview and uh, telling us how Fujitsu is helping their customers really make the most of this exciting opportunity. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you, Sean. Thank you.